life and my life is like a lamp to a world that is searching for the path. We have become the example of Christ and we are now the light of the world. Can the world see the radiance of Christ in you? Evangelism does not happen by accident. Discipleship does not happen by accident. If we're going to fulfill our God-given mission as a church, we need to be intentional and reach out and share and introduce people to Jesus Christ. is an amazing continent with 50% of its population under the age of 18. If we impact the children, we would have impacted the future of the church and the future of our world. Each one of us has something to bring to the table. Are you willing to release your resources, surrendering your material goods or your gifts and talents or your time or your heart? What are you going to do? If we're going to plant the 300 churches, if we're going to reach out to a million people through evangelism, if we're going to disciple 100,000 in this nation, and if we are going to have an impact with the poor, with the needy, with children, with all the others who are part of our communities around us, it's not going to happen unless you have committed yourself to the purposes of God and you have been faithful to live by those purposes. What I really want us to do is to reflect on scripture for a brief while and then I'm going to call you forward. Anyone here who needs healing, I want to believe that today is a day of healing. Your elders, your pastors, the prayer counselors have been praying for this and asking God to appear in a mighty way and been fasting so that we're prepared for today. I have come with a photo of my daughter, and I want her prayed over. And I pray that you have brought friends or loved ones who need to be healed, and maybe they can't be here with us, but you can stand in their place, much like the man who came to Jesus and said, my servant is sick, please heal my servant. And Jesus did it over a distance, never even went into the servant's home but healed that servant because the master had come and asked for healing. And you can be in that place for your friend. Today is a day of healing. God calls himself Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. This is in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, where he told the Israelites, I will not bring any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians upon you, for I am the Lord your healer. And he called them to obedience. That God who calls himself Jehovah Rapha is our God, and he is here. And over the last couple of weeks, we have looked at scriptures and what scriptures say about Jesus and healing in the five broken places that sin, the sin of Adam, brought into the world. And one of those is physical healing. And when he sent out his disciples in Mark chapter 16, he told them to go and preach the gospel to all creation. And he told them, these signs will follow you. You will cast out demons. You will heal the sick. And so in some senses, healing is part of our testimony. We should 
and must expect it because Jesus has said, we will heal. And he told us in Matthew chapter 28, go ye therefore and preach the gospel. And he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and we heal in his name, not in ours. You don't even know who it was who prayed for, for dear Judy. And I, I don't even want to tell you because you might all line up, you know, after this guy. But it's not about him. It's about God and the fact that he has given us the ministry of healing. We looked at Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5. And what the author of the book of Matthew says in Matthew chapter 8 where he gives four healings in Matthew chapter 8. And then he declares the prophecy of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5. And he is intimating what Isaiah said, that these things happened because Jesus was the Messiah and by his stripes we have been healed. And so we're calling God to show himself and to bring healing to us today. But I want to talk about the five places where God does not give healing. Just very quickly. The first of those is when the faith of the person being healed is non-existent. When the faith of the person being healed is non-existent. You know, in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus went to the village that he had grown up in, the village of Nazareth, and he wanted to bring healing to the people of his village, but they became cynical and they would not believe. And if you can pick up the story with me in Matthew chapter 13, verse 53 through verse 58, it says there, he came to his own town, hometown of Nazareth, and there he began teaching the people in their synagogue. They were amazed. Where did this man get his wisdom? Where did he get the power to do miracles, they asked. Isn't this a carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? Aren't his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Then where did this man get all these miracles and signs? They were not pleased with him at all. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is without honor, is, with, uh, is honored everywhere except in his own town and in his own home. And then in verse 58 we read, He did only a few miracles in Nazareth because the people there had no faith. My dear friends, if you come for healing and you do not believe that God heals and that he can heal you, then he will not for your lack of faith. And you need to come and cry out to the Lord like Judy did. Lord, I believe, I believe. Your coming forward itself is a sign of faith. You wouldn't come forward unless there is a hunger and a desire in your heart that you would know the healing of God. So come with faith that God may grant you the healing that you're asking for. There is a second time when God does not heal, and it is when the person who will pray for you doesn't believe that God is able to heal. There's an instance in the book of Matthew chapter 17 where Jesus comes down from the mountain of transfiguration and he finds his, his disciples are wrestling with a demon. And we pick up the story in verse 14. When they came near the crowd, a man approached Jesus. He got on his knees in front of Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He shakes wildly and suffers a great deal. He often falls into the fire and into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And Jesus' reaction was frustration and impatience with his disciples. And he asked, how long do I have to stay with you? When will you finally believe? How long do I have to put up with you? 
bring the boy here to me. And they brought the boy to Jesus and he commanded a demon to leave. And the demon left. Verse 19, then the disciples came to Jesus in private. They asked, why couldn't we drive out the demon and give healing? And Jesus replied, because your faith is so small. And he told them, what I'm about to tell you is true. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will be done. Nothing will be impossible for you. And so for those of us who pray over you, if we do not believe that God is able to heal, then we deny you your healing and we keep it from ever arriving to be a blessing to you. And so this week, we have prepared ourselves and been in prayer that we would come believing that God is going to give healing. There's a third time when healing does not come, and it is when there is sin in your life. David, King David prayed, giving a testimony in Psalm chapter 32 and verse 3 through to verse 5. And the confession of his own life was this, when I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water. In the summer heat, verse 58, Finally, I con sorry, verse 5, finally I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I say to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me and all my guilt is gone and my healing has come. And it may be that you want to come for prayer today, but there is sin in your life. Sin that you have swept under the carpet, that you have gotten over, you have moved on, and you feel, you know, well, don't make anything big of it. You know, God is okay with it. It was such a long time ago anyway. What does it matter anymore? I've moved on from there. But you never confessed it. And you never asked for God's forgiveness. And you think it's a, a small deal. But for God, it is a big deal. Because there is sin in your life that is unconfessed and therefore unforgiven and you need to come and ask him for forgiveness. In the book of James chapter 5 and verse 14, the apostle James writes and says, Is anyone among you sick? Then that person should send for the elders of the church to pray over them. They should ask the elders to anoint them with olive oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer offered by those who have faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will heal them. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. And so confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. You must confess it. Don't make light of it. You know, today... We make light of the sins that we participate in. In fact, we even call them respectable sins. And so when it comes to something like greed, which is a sin in God's eyes, we call it ambition. And so we take this thing out of it and make light of it. Worldliness, we call being realistic. Envy is called competitiveness. Judgmentalism is called evaluation. Impatience is called time consciousness. Pride is called, you know, deportment. Arrogance is the same thing. Selfishness is called looking out for number one, and it is wise stewardship. And we try and make light of sin, but it is still sin in God's eye. And you need to confess that sin, even as we invite you to pray, that you would come up to an elder, that you would come up to a pastor and say, before you pray for me, would you please pray over my life? I have been involved in, in adultery. I have cheated on my spouse. 
and I need to ask God for forgiveness. It happened 10 years ago, but I never, never, ever brought it up to the Lord. I just put it under the carpet and I moved on. I had an abortion and I have refused to deal with that. I don't want for anyone to know. I never even went to the Lord and asked for forgiveness. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's unforgiveness that you hold a grudge against somebody and it's festering in you. Maybe you have embezzled what does not belong to you or harsh words towards somebody and you wounded them because of it. It may be things like theft, that you have taken what is not yours and it's called long-term borrowing. It is sin in God's eyes and you must confess it. God will not heal when you have sinned and will not recognize that he is holy and he has called us to be pure. There's a fourth time when God does not heal. And it is when your illness glorifies God. Sounds rather odd. But the Apostle Paul helps us understand this. He had an illness. We don't know what it was. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he calls it a thorn in the flesh. It was something that was presumably painful, so painful that he asked God repeatedly to heal him. And if you'd read with me 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, Therefore, so that I would not become arrogant, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to trouble me, so that I would not become proud. I asked the Lord three times about this, that it would that he would heal me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So then I will boast more gladly about my weakness so that the power of Christ may reside in me. Therefore, I am content in my weakness. With insults, with troubles, with persecution and difficulties for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. God refused to heal Paul. And he said, your pain and your illness will bring glory to me because it keeps you humble. And therefore he would not heal. We see this in several other places in scripture. John chapter 11, when Lazarus, a good friend of Jesus Christ, was sick. The news came to Jesus, but Jesus was in another part of Palestine. And he could have made it back to Lazarus' home so that he can heal him. But Jesus decided not to go. And he lingered in this place away from Lazarus for two more days. When he got to Jerusalem or to where Lazarus was, Lazarus' sister Ma Mary and Martha cried out and said, if, you, if only you had come in time, he would have been healed. And Jesus told them, this thing is not for death. It is for the glory of God. Lazarus had already died. He had been in the grave for at least three days. But Jesus then went to the grave and he raised Lazarus from the dead. But he allowed him to die before he did that. And many who saw this believed in him as a result. It was to the glory of God. There's another instance in scripture where God does not heal, but allows a person to carry their sickness because that sickness brings glory to him. And it's a story of Job. When Satan came up to, to God and said, Job only loves you because he's a rice Christian. What that means is he only loves you because you bless him. If you remove away the blessings and remove away, you know, his wealth and move away his health, he's going to curse you in your face. A rice Christian, only worshipping God because God has been good to me and he gives me blessings and I've got a good job and I've got a car and I've got a home and I've got money in the bank, therefore I love God. But if God takes all that away, then our faith is nothing and we curse him in the face. But Job did not curse God. He loved God. He continued to worship God even as he struggled with his illness. And God will sometimes test our faith by allowing illness to come our way so that he can see 
whether we're rice Christians or not. And so sometimes our faith brings glory to God or our sickness brings glory to God. We may not understand it, but we need to remember that there is more to life than this earth. And there is an eternity where there will be no more illness, no more sickness, and we will look back on those meager little 70 years and thank God that he allowed us to suffer for him for such a short time so that our faith could be proven pure. The fifth time that God does not heal is when God is calling us home. And this should be obvious because it is appointed for man to die once and then stand before the judgment throne. We will all die. We will all go home. Some will be called early. Some will be called late. If every time someone fell ill, we responded by cancelling that illness and, you know, shindwe here and uh, refusing and calling for healing and we had our way, then men would live to 900 years old and even then we would not let them go. But it is appointed for man to die once so that even Lazarus, who was raised from the dead, eventually died again and went home to be with the Lord. Everybody will die. And there is an illness that comes when you are 20 because God is calling you home. And even though it feels unfair you're only 20, it is nevertheless the hand of God that is at work to call you home. And somehow we need to have the wisdom to know whether this illness leads to glory or whether this illness is an ailment while on this earth. And where it leads to glory, to let God's people being called home, go home with grace. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 22. Jesus told his disciples that my time is coming for me to die and to go to be with the Father. And Peter comes up to him and he tells him in verse 22, never, never, Lord, you will not die. This will never happen to you. And Jesus turned to Peter and he said to him, get behind me, Satan. You are standing in my way. This thing is of God. And he has declared it will happen for the redemption of men. And for you to try and cancel it and for you to stand against it, you are standing in the way of God. You do not have the mind in mind the things of God. Instead, you only have in mind the things men care about. The time will come when all of us will go. The question is, will we fight it with our wealth? Will we fight it with medication? Will we fight it with consultations? Or will we recognize that this one is that I may go home? And whatever I have, cancer, or maybe it's chemical imbalance, or maybe it's an accident, they are but the doorway that usher me into the presence of my Father in heaven. And so, good people, God doesn't heal in those five places. I want to believe that today is a day of healing. I'm going to give you an opportunity to come up in a minute. There's going to be a ton of counselors that we have been preparing for today. And if you have an ailment that needs healing, come. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 18, Jesus read the scriptures and he declared these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of God's favor. My brothers and sisters, as your shepherd, I declare that God is in this place for we have gathered in his name. And he is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And so I want to call you to come that we may anoint you in obedience to scripture and proclaim good news over you and proclaim healing. Some of you need physical healing, but God is not limited to physical healing alone. The most important healing of all 
a spiritual healing because it impacts eternity. If you do not find spiritual healing and find your God on this earth, then it impacts your eternity. As I said last week, without Jesus, you live once, but you die twice. And one of those deaths is an eternal death. Better be that you live with your physical ailment, but that you are healed spiritually. And there are those of you here today who need to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior before we can talk about any other sort of healing. Like Judy did, that her healing physically came, having at long last known who her Savior is in Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to be calling you forward if you would like to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. I will call you to come that we may pray for you and then we can talk about other healing as is necessary. For some of you, this is a day of good news to those who are poor because your poverty has brought illness. You, you do not have a good diet. You're struggling to put food on the table and some of the physical ailments that you find are not about the physical problem, but about the fact of poverty. And so come forward, and we will pray, not just for physical healing, but that God would heal your pocket so that you have enough sustenance. God's Spirit is here to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. And some of you here have been imprisoned by ill health and sickness. You take medicine, over and over and over again. There is no end. Your doctor has told you this is a condition you need to accept and you will live with it for the rest of your life. But God is able to heal. Some of you are in bondage, prisoners to alcohol and to pornography on the web and to lust and to adultery and to sex and to drugs. And today the chains can be broken if you ask God to heal you of these ailments. Some are in bondage here to singlehood, I dare say, or even to a bad marriage, to a spouse who is a godless character, a loveless marriage, and you're in bondage to it. Come forward and claim spiritual healing for your spouse, that there may be healing in your home as Jesus begins to transform that spouse and there is a turnaround in the marriage. Some here are prisoners to the demonic. Maybe a demonic spirit that displays itself in a low level of illness as a symptom of a disease, like you find in the scriptures that you could have diagnosed some of these who were brought to Jesus for a demon to be cast out, but they displayed, the demons displayed themselves through some symptom that looked innocent, but it wasn't really an illness, a physical illness. It was a demonic illness. And there may be those of you here today that even as we pray for healing, the real need is to cast out an evil spirit that you may be healed because Jesus gives healing even of demonic spirits. It may be a persistent cough, a mild pain that never seems to go away, particularly present when you're engaged in the things of God and the demons disguise themselves in some sort of symptom or physical ailment. The Spirit of the Lord is here to make the blind see and to heal congenital diseases and conditions. I call you to come in faith and to come and ask God for healing. Astonish God as we saw in the story of the man who said to Jesus, you do not have to come to my home. Just pray over the distance and my servant will be healed. And the Bible says that Jesus was astonished by the faith of this man. And he said, I have never seen such faith in all of Israel. And this was a Roman centurion, the very person you expect to be cynical. So come and, and astonish the Lord with your faith. Maybe you say, I don't understand divine healing. But you know, the scriptures don't say that you must understand it to receive it. The scriptures say if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, even if you don't understand, God will heal you.
And so I want to call you to come and to leave the shoreline and to take that first step onto the waters and to come to Jesus for healing. Could we have the prayer counselors come in, please? Pastor Nick, if you could ask them to come in. And I want to call you for this healing. But I especially want to call those who first and foremost want to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Before everyone else comes up, I want to call the ones who want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to come up. And so, as the elders, as the pastors, as the prayer counselors, stand here facing the congregation. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come forward that we may give you this opportunity before we call everyone else. Anyone who would like to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior, just stand up where you are. For those of you standing at the back, walk down the aisle, come to one of these who are at the front here, and they will lead you in a prayer of salvation. Anyone here who would like to receive Christ as Lord and Savior, please come forward. I believe our brother coming down the aisle there would like to do that. Let's give him a hand clap and <laughs> rejoice over him. Anyone else here? Yes, my brother here to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Anyone else? Anyone else who is coming to receive Christ as Lord and Savior? Just walk down the aisle. And then we're going to open up. Thank you, my dear sister. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, let's give them a hand clap. Anyone else who would like to receive? Yes, my sister, come down. We're soon going to open it up for everyone. And you will find there are 100 people who come forward. And so for those who would like to receive Christ as Lord and Savior, take this opportunity, this window that allows you an opportunity of special attention. Anyone else? One last call before we call those who are coming for healing. Yes, my brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Okay. Shall we rise to our feet as our counselors pray for these who are at the front here? Please, my brother, go over right to the extreme of the tent. There are our prayer counselors there. As we rise to our feet, I want to call you, if you have come for healing today, to come to our prayer counselors. They stretch right from the end of the tent there to the other tent, and so we have many people. You can take as much time as you need to. If you need to be here for a half hour, even an hour, we have the children in Sunday school. We're giving them something to eat, so they're not going to miss you and they're going to play on the swings because mommy always comes before we have a chance to play. Today is their chance as you receive your healing. So don't worry about the kids, but come forward. No matter how long it takes, just come forward and we will pray for you. Allow me to begin with a prayer here. Father, these are your people and they need to see this miracle of healing that you promise us in the scriptures. You call yourself Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals his people. And so prove yourself faithful and bring healing here. I bring my daughter, Lord, and I want her prayed over that she may be healed. And there are many others here, Lord, in person, or maybe they have brought a photograph, maybe they have brought a handkerchief, maybe they have brought a name and they want a friend, a loved one, a mother, a father, somewhere healed. And we ask that the administration of your grace of healing would be here in abundance. And so I want to call you forward now. Would you come and receive the healing that God has for us in this place today? Come forward and receive the healing of God. If you need to confess a sin, then just come up to the ones who are praying for you and tell them what your sin is and let them pray over your life. Stretching right up to the end over there and right up to the end on my right. Just come forward, come forward and allow God present in this place to touch you divinely 
and to bring healing.